Okay. All right. Hello. Welcome Hello. to Our Dinner is Done. I'm Sally. I'm Jimmy. Uh, if this is your first time joining us, welcome. If not, welcome back. Uh, tonight, we are just going to be making some appetizers. We're going to be making two different appetizers. Uh, last week on our Instagram stream, we had um, opened up some questions to our followers, and some of our followers were asking if we have any like holiday go-to appetizers or holiday go-to meals. Um, so we decided to share two different appetizers that we like, um, and they don't have to be for the holidays. They can be used at any time, really. Uh, we make this uh, uh, ricotta and toast. Right. We make that. We make this bread a lot. Uh, yeah. And shrimp. Who doesn't like shrimp? We make this for dinner quite often too. So these are these can be made anytime you know anytime you want. But they are nice if you are hosting um, people for the holidays or hosting for a gathering. Um, so we are going to be making two different kinds. First thing is ricotta and tomato. Uh, toast and we drizzle a little bit of like a spicy honey on top and it's very very tasty and then the second uh item that we're going to be doing is a garlic butter baked shrimp and everything that we're making tonight is really easy there's not a whole lot of ingredients to either of the dishes um but there's a shrimp there we're only using half a pound tonight um just two of us it's just the two of us yeah exactly so if you're having more people, you're gonna want to up the recipe a bit. But we'll post these recipes later on our Instagram, um, like we normally do uh, after we do our stream. Uh, so the first thing that we're gonna do, we have our oven. It, it's preheating to 425. We're gonna use the oven for both of these dishes. Uh, we're gonna wanna toast our bread in a little bit. We're gonna want to bake our shrimp, obviously. And we are gonna be blistering and roasting these tomatoes up too. So I guess that's the first thing we'll yeah, be doing. We'll so take the longest. So these because are we need to cook them and then cool. Exactly. These have already been washed. These are just some um, multicolored cherry tomatoes. There. We do the multicolored because we just really like them, and they're pretty when you make this dish. Yeah. Um, hello, Babs. Uh, this is a really pretty dish. You don't have to cut these or do anything to them. You could just leave them as they are, and we're just going to be coating them with some olive oil and some salt and pepper. That's it. Do we have? Do you I just took oh, it you out got enough. Okay. So you just kind of want to put enough olive oil in there to coat it. That was probably what, like a tablespoon, not even that yeah, you're putting yeah. in there. Maybe like a half tablespoon. Probably like a full tablespoon. Um, now it's a full tablespoon. Yeah. yeah. Now. So full tablespoon. This is this is one container of tomatoes too. I'm not even quite sure of the size. Maybe it's like ten ounces or so. I can tell you. about 12 ounces here of tomatoes. And just a pinch of salt and pepper. Yep, so salt, pepper. You just really want to just kind of evenly coat them up here. Um, make sure that they're coated with olive oil and the seasonings to give them some flavor. And you also want them to be coated with the olive oil so that they don't stick to your baking tray. We have a baking tray that it's not going to stick to anyway, but that's okay. So now we're just going to put that on top. Spread them out. Um, make sure they're not super crowded in in here. And then we're just going to throw them in the oven. Again, this oven's been preheated to 425. And we're going to kind of let them do their thing for about, I'd say about 20 minutes or so. Um, yeah, I'd check them at 10. We'll check them at 10. Okay, so we'll put their timer on at 10. And we'll give them a, uh, a look-see at that time. And we're going to just want them to start blistering up, start browning a little bit. You want them to start to kind of pop as well. Yeah, they're going to basically cook down. They're just going to cook down a little bit. It's going to make like a really nice, pretty appetizer. Okay, so that's going to go in the oven. I'm going to set the timer for 10 minutes. And then we'll get going on some of the other stuff here. Perfect. Okay. We're just using a uh, loaf of Italian bread here too. This is a day old actually. We bought it yesterday. We have some snow where we are. Um, so we wanted to be prepared for this and we didn't want to have to run out of the store today. So we have this loaf, but since we're going to be making toast out of it, it's okay if it's a day old. We're going to end up slicing this and throwing it in the oven as well to toast it up and uh, get it nice and ready when we need it. Ah, oh, that's right. 
Buckeye Tail. You got your Buckeye Tail, that's right. Okay, so. I could slice it with the bread. You want to slice it with the bread? Just get that. Yeah, get that way. Eat a little bit. <laughs> that's true. We're, we were just both talking about how hungry we are right before we started. Um, that's the issue with doing this stream at our actual dinner time because as we're cooking, we're really hungry. <laughs> Yeah, so we're going to cut these up, and now, generally, what do you use? Like, about an inch? About an inch. Yeah, you want them, you don't want them to be crazy thick, but that looks like just about what you want there, about an inch or so. Oh, maybe no, half maybe inch. half an inch to three quarters. Three, three quarters of an inch. Um, and because you just want, and you want a nice sized bread so that you can put the toppings on without it being a little, you know, like all over the place. I will warn you though that these are a little bit messy to mm -hmm. eat, but they're really good. Them delicious. being day old is actually a benefit. Yeah, because they're a little they're bit firm. They're firmed up a little bit. So that, that's yummy, yummy. So we're going to give these a light toast. You want to grab me another cheap pan? Sure. Oh, no, we're going to use them. So we're going to make quite a bit of this. Maybe we just put them like, like this to yep. toast. And do you put any olive oil or anything on the bread to toast them? We could. We could put a lot of nice Brush and a little flavor. Oil in there. Yeah. Let's just do, let's just do that many. Okay. Let's see. So we have 12 pieces right here going to go on here and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lightly brush them with some olive oil for when we, when we want to toast them. I'm not going to throw them in the toaster. I'm not going to throw them in yet because um, they don't they won't need that much time to toast up. Thank you. Just adding just a touch of olive oil. You can kind of see me doing that on the camera there. I definitely got some breadcrumbs on the floor because the dogs are. The dogs are loving it. Yeah, right under me. <laughs> now, for this toast recipe, we're using just fresh red pepper flakes. Um, but if you have Calabrian chilies, that's definitely something that you could use. Uh, it's always suggested. I've never actually It's actually that. suggested, actually yeah, but we've never buy them. We chili. always just have red, crushed it's, red pepper. Yeah. It's, it's what you have on hand. Hey, Mark. Mark, I'm pretty sure you've had these when we've made them before, and I think you too, Beth. Yeah. I'm pretty sure we made them last Christmas. Yeah, um, I think we did. This, this is like one of our favorite apps. Yeah, one of our go-tos. They're really easy to make, and they're, like we said, they're really pretty, and they're hearty. And you could, this is a nice, um, this is even just like a, like a nice side dish. If you're going to be making like pasta or something, it's just nice to have. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I could probably start getting the shrimp ready. Yeah. So these shrimp that we have are um, just some raw shrimp that we got. We will have to peel and devein them, and also uh, we're going to butterfly them too. So the reason I get the whole shrimp uh, with this with the shell on is <laughs> you save like four bucks a pound. Yes, it's so much cheaper to, to buy them this way. It's a little bit more work. There's an extra extra step, um, obviously, to prepare them. And when you get them that are already peeled and deveined, you're paying for it. That's what you're paying for. Um, but it's not a really hard thing to do. It's just a little bit tedious. Yeah. So this was always my task growing up. I always had to peel a shrimp, so I've gotten kind of good at it. So you have the shell, hard shell on the outside, and you get the legs on the bottom. So I always just take my thumb, and you'll be able to kind of find the space in between the shell and the legs, and just press your thumb kind of through and the shell will start to pop off. And just kind of work your way down, just gently, because you don't want to rip the shrimp open. Mm -hmm. And you're just going to be able to peel that shell off almost in one, 
in one solid piece. And you just want to peel it down. So in this case, we're going to leave the tail on. In a lot of our recipes, you see we take the tail off. We take just it off. It's, yeah. If you're eating it in a pasta, if you went out to eat, it would have the tail on. But we prefer without the tail. It's just easier. You don't have to pull the shrimp out of the tail. So I'm just going to peel them first, and then we're going to devein them afterwards. Mm -hmm. We're leaving the tail on in this case just because with an appetizer, sometimes it's a little bit easier to pick to them up. By the tail. Um, to grab them by the tail. Exactly. So is this my bread to eat? It is, yeah. Nice. <laughs> So again, this is going to be like a little bit stale, but that's okay. Yeah, a little olive oil gives, mm -hmm. it, gives it some new life. Mm. So for these shrimp, after he gets this all done and prepped, we are not going to be, we, we normally season everything with salt and pepper. In this case, we're not going to be using salt because for this garlic butter baked shrimp, if you have unsalted butter, please, by all means, salt your shrimp up. But since we don't and we have salted butter on hand, we don't want to double up the salt and make these super salty. So we're going to avoid putting salt on the shrimp themselves. Um, Which you're going to have to remind me because it's almost like instinctual. Yeah, it's instinctual for him to do it. So we're not going to put salt on these because the butter, our butter has salt in it. And also, like, the breadcrumbs that we use are probably going to have a little bit of a saltiness to them, too. So you don't want to over salt and ruin the dish. So I'm going to check on the baby who's in his stander, relaxing in the other room. Doing great. Okay. So, yeah, this is just, this is the stuff that's going to take the longest, obviously. Um, so if you if you already buy them without having to do this, that's great. You save, some, save yourself some time, too. I should have done these beforehand and just... Just done one as an example. To show you. That's true. But That's this okay. is for it to have it. This is, this, is, this is real cooking. Yeah, this is what we do. When we're it's not a TV cook. show. <laughs> right. We're, we're not a TV show. We're not edited to show you like, oh, this could get done in five minutes. No, we're showing you exactly how long it takes us to make our, our dinner. And the reason we decided to do apps tonight too like this is because when we go out to eat, which we haven't done in a very long time, pre-pandemic uh, times, one of our favorite things to do when we go to a restaurant is to just go out and order a bunch of appetizers and really just pick through them and that's what our dinner is because we like to have like tastes of everything. Um, and sometimes maybe we'll get like one entree and a bunch of apps, but normally we just Usually do like, it's top like of a couple stuff. of apps mm -hmm. and maybe an entree mm -hmm. or just all apps. Uh, and it's really great to do that at like Italian restaurants or like tapas restaurants. And we just love getting like a couple different seafood we dishes. We just found that nice Italian spaghettos. Oh yeah, spaghettos. Spaghettos. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It was like an Italian tapas restaurant. Italian tapas we restaurant. discovered it right just before. Right before you were pregnant. Yeah. No, like, right as I was pregnant. Right as you were pregnant. Just yeah. been pregnant. Yeah. So they had a tremendous wine list and mm -hmm. like and I all these <laughs> and then all these fun apps, some of which you couldn't have, mm -hmm. and then I do believe kind of though that they are still that they're, they're doing to go baskets. Oh, that's fun. Meals, so we could always look into doing that. But anyway, for eating at home, we do like to cook like this sometimes too, like making our own version of like an app night. So this is going to kind of be like our app night date night <laughs> meal. And since we're going to be doing the toast and like the shrimp, we might also make like a side salad for us to eat uh, just to get our greens in there and get our veggies in uh, so that we don't feel super, super weighed down. Almost there. So again, it doesn't take that much time. It doesn't. It doesn't. Listen, if you want to spend the extra four bucks, go for it. <laughs> I'm uh, a little more thrifty. And I kind of like, I mean, I enjoy the whole process of cooking, so I don't mind chucking a shrimp, deshelling a shrimp. Yep. This little guy doesn't have yep. a tail. Oh, it does, it's missing a tail? Maybe that's the one we'll use for the baby then. Oh, perfect. Uh -huh. All right, so our timer just went off on the oven here, so it's just the time for me to check on these tomatoes. And they are already starting to blister up. So you might need to just kind of like move them. I'm just going to, yeah, we're just going to kind of work them up a little she's gonna bit. Move she's going to move them so that the, uh, <clears throat> they can get a nice toast on the top and the bottom. Get 
something to move them around with. And I will pull them out just so that you can see what they look like right now. All right, so you, I, you can kind of see um, that they're already starting to blister, like the skin on them, it's starting to pop. Um, so what I'm going to do is going to toss them a little bit and then put them back in and let them kind of get a little bit toastier on the other side as well. I'm gonna eat some bread mm -hmm. off camera. I'm just gonna mess with these. Some of these tomatoes are actually pretty big for being um, cherry tomatoes. Cherry tomatoes, but since they're like the mix like this, and as I'm as I'm turning them, they're just starting to kind of pop and uh, open up a little bit. But that's okay. That's what we want. So while Sally's doing that, I'm gonna show you how to devein a shrimp. Um, so I have my shrimp, I've taken the shell off, so I just have the tail now, and the vein is going to run right down the body of the shrimp. And I don't think you can see, where's the camera, there it is. So you can almost see, do you see that black line in there? That's going to be the vein that we want to take out. The vein is, uh, it's something. <laughs> I can tell you what it is. You can go ahead and Google it. It's not appetizing. And you'll notice once I slice it open, you'll see that little vein in the center. And that vein you can just then pull out, like so, and out comes your vein. Mm -hmm. uh, we are ready for the snow. Yes, yeah. we are. So to finish this into a butterfly, I'm just going to continue my cut a little bit further into the shrimp. And butterfly just means to cut it open to give it like wings. So the butterfly is just going to open the shrimp up a little bit. And that way when we cook it, we'll actually be able to put it down flat. It'll be nice and pretty. So that is our butterfly Perfect. shrimp. Um, I'm going to do the rest over the sink because running it over the water when you're deveining just makes it, the vein fall out um, mm -hmm. much easier and it's a little bit quicker. Yeah. So right now we have our... Oh, excuse me one second. We have our tomatoes in there. Um, I put the timer on for about another eight minutes and I'll check on them again. And like I said, we just kind of want them to blister, pop open. When we take those out, we're going to give them some time to cool. And then we'll start making our ricotta cheese mixture that will go on top of the toast. Um, and then we'll wait and do like the honey mixture towards the end. Um, for, the sh for the shrimp... Once we're ready to make those, we are going to be um, adding some shallot and some garlic to that as well. And we're going to make, we're going to make like a breadcrumb and butter mixture and kind of roll our shrimp in that and then let them bake in the oven. Um, and those will be super, super tasty. But all we need uh, is some panko breadcrumbs. Okay, we actually have some panko breadcrumbs that, again, um, we have some plain ones, but we're almost done with these. So we have panko that's already been seasoned, and this has some pecorino romano cheese. And like I was saying, we're not going to be adding salt because something like this is probably a little bit salty on its own. So we don't want to go crazy salty, and the butter that we have is already salty. We use, hi Grace, welcome. We use a butter that's like an olive oil and butter mixture together. Um, so just... If you have unsalted butter at home, feel free to use that. If you have regular butter, feel free to use that. But you maybe want to just cut down the salt and take a little bit. So I'm just going to start peeling the shallot a little bit for you. Because that's going to come next. And with shallots, if you follow us, and have watched any of our other cooking tutorials, you know that shallots are more mild for children, and we've been on like a super shallot kick lately. Um, 
They're delish. Shout out to Sloan every time you say that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pretty much. So, anybody who's watching right now, do you have like favorite go to appetizers that you like to make when you're preparing food for for guests? Or even your favorite apps. Like, or just, yeah, or even when you go out. Like, what are the, your favorite types of things that you like to eat? Eat out at restaurants? You know, like, a lot of people love a good spinach dip appetizer. Mm -hmm. um, I got a good recipe. Yeah, maybe that's something that we can make on stream. I can't reveal where it's from. I signed a non-disclosure. Mm -hmm. That's true. I don't have the exact. We can make it like inspired by inspired by a city in Texas. <laughs> Rick City. So this shallot is I didn't want to cut off the stem. Uh, that would have made it a little bit easier to peel. So bear with me. And we're going to end up cooking these shallots in a little bit of olive oil. And we're going to make the, we're going to finely chop them. So they're not going to take too long to cook, actually. Uh, but when you're cooking a shallot or an onion, you want to make sure that they cook down to where they start to become like translucent and pretty see through. How are we doing there? Good. One of these days he's going to test me on like how to cut the shallot, and I really don't want today to be the day. <laughs> today would have been a good day for it, though. I'll cut it myself, but it's just not going to be like how he cuts it. Because for me, I don't have a nice chop like he does. I know you usually do like the slices. Nope. Nope. Stop. <laughs> I used to make you that and I still okay. haven't sharp sharp. I don't have a sharp knife. He's using the sharp knife. I mean this one is I did the sharp and I've been saying that for like weeks now. Yeah. You were close. You were just like a step off. So shrimps are shrimps. Uh shrimps are peeled, deveined, and butterfly. So yes, yeah, so the salad was on the right track. So we have she's got a peel. Actually, it might be a little skin left on here. It might just be a little rough skin. Oh. So you have your stem. This would be your hairy end. You can't quite see. There's no hair left, but it's going to be kind of um, off. a larger. And then you have your other end where the skin's coming together. So you're going to take that off first. Throw that into your garbage. Then you are going to cut along the lines that it has. One, two, three... Four, five. Then you're gonna come across mm -hmm. perpendicular for three cuts. And then you're gonna finally chop it. And then you're gonna finally chop it. So three cuts. Now every time I have like a, a blooming scallion, now shallot. every time I shallot. Mm -hmm. Now every time I cut, I'm gonna end up with these nice little tiny ones. Tiny dice pieces. Yep. And those will be perfect to I'm gonna end up heating up this pan with some olive oil. Oh, our tomatoes look good. I think I'm just going to take those out. Escargot. Where did you hear escargot? Yeah. Was somebody talking about that in the chat? Maybe I missed it. She loves escargot. That's yeah. her favorite app. Oh, oh, that's her favorite app. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. Yes. And Grace said breaded zucchini. Great. Those are both some good ones. Well, breaded zucchini is always a good one. Yeah, well. breaded zucchini is good. Those look perfect. Okay. So, this is what we want, want to see here. Okay. So we've got these blistered tomatoes. The skin on them are a little bit brown. They've popped open. So these are good. Put these here. Let them chill out there. Should I cook up baby shrimp? Sure. And I will saute up this, uh, these shallots. Mm -hmm. Actually, will you give me a little bit of oil for that, please? I think you need butter. Oh, we do both. 
We can do a little oil, and, a little oil and then we'll add the butter with the garlic. Perfect. Cool. Mark said he's hungry now. So we're be, man. We're so hungry. <laughs> All right. Is that it right there? No, that was my sample shrimp. There's one little guy that didn't have a tail. I don't know what you do with it. There he is. So baby's having shrimp tonight. All right. I'm going to take these shallots. Get them cooking. What's that? This yep. is sticking. The snow is sticking. I'm announced daddy. Okay. So I'm just gonna coat these shallots in some olive oil and we're gonna just let them cook down, soften up, and start to get nice and translucent. And then we'll add some garlic as well to that, as, and the um, breadcrumb. What do you say we're doing? Three? Yeah, two or three cloves. I feel like that's good. We usually go with three. I feel like. Cool. You've made escargot bags, really? She Tell made it for me. Oh really? Yeah. That's cool. I've never she has. That. She had, she has a little shelves for it. Really? And and I think the trays. Oh, that's cool. There's like contraptions to use to cook yeah. them. Yeah. I've never seen that done before. We've had escargot together. We have. The three of us. At um. Oh, yeah. I've been there forever. I know. She gets you open there. Yeah. We're just getting as we were talking about like making apps tonight. We were like missing going out to eat. And so we were talking about places that we haven't been to in a while. Like tomorrow, I want to make soup. Um, I want to make a lobster biscuit, actually. Sorry, Bebs. Mm -hmm. um, and we were talking about this one uh, seafood restaurant, um, seafood gourmet that we love. And then we were talking about, now, um, I'm thinking of uh, our spot. Ivy. Ivy Inn. Mm -hmm. Oh, thanks for the follow, Blink Blink Blink. What do we have? Bling bling king. Bling bling. Bling bling. Bling bling. I like it. Well, I'm going to put a little pepper. I'm not going to salt this. No. <laughs> I'm going to keep saying it out loud so that I remember. Did you already season the shrimp? No, you haven't. Nope. Didn't touch it. All right. I'm going to leave the oven on right now, and I didn't put the bread or anything in yet. We're going to want these tomatoes to kind of cool down. We're going to need some time for the shrimp and everything to cook, so I'm not going to throw the bread in just yet. We have some time. So, I got my three garlic cloves to get the skin off, pop a uh, pressure knife over them, and then press down. Nice, firm smack with the palm of, or the butt of your hand, heel of your hand. What is this part called? <laughs> uh, who Grace said, Jimmy, can you get that city in Texas's kale salad recipe? <laughs> yeah, I got it. Right here. They're all right there. <laughs> That one's actually really easy. It's all about the vinaigrette. That's true, it is vinaigrette. You can have peanuts, right? Yeah. Yeah, she can have peanuts. Peanuts is the main thing. I think that's the one thing. And, the, and the, trick to, the trick to kale is finely, finely. Chopping, chopping. it, exactly. That's it's the like way a dice. I like it. You need it, and that's the great thing about that. That salad dome was similar to that Mediterranean salad, like a tabouli. Is it tabouli? Yeah, it's tabouli. It's almost like finely, finely, finely chopped. Um, greetings. Mm -hmm. That's the key to that salad. That does have a little uh, Parmesan cheese in it, but... The salad? Yeah, the salad. Mm -hmm. But you could always leave that Yeah. They even have, like, vegan kinds of that, Yeah, too. vegan cheeses. All right, so cheese. garlic. I'm going to cut the same way as I cut my shallot. So I'm going to cut it going down about four slices. Then I'm going to slice it once going through the center, and then I'm going to dice it up. Three times through. 
so it's spread out nicely, and then one time through the middle. Now you'll see that when I dice, I'm going to have all these little pieces. So I'm going to do that to all, all, all three of my cloves. Again, this would be considered like the hairy end, so like an onion. So again, I'm going to leave that part together. That's going to hold my garlic clove together while I slice. Three slices along the long ways. And then one slice through the center. And I just lowered the heat on these shallots. I realized that I had it on a little too high. Um, I don't want them to burn, so I've just lowered them a bit. On the other pan, in case you're wondering, that baby's shrimp. Yeah. A little bit of shrimp for the baby. Shrimp. So I'm trying to cook it low and slow, because I don't want to get a char on the outside. For we the don't babies. want it to get super tough either. All right, so my garlic is ready to be diced. Mm -hmm. So now just nice fine dices using my claw method, just a mini claw so I don't hurt my fingers. If you're not comfortable, especially cutting something small like this using a chef knife, you're more than welcome to use a smaller knife. And a good starter knife is always these little ceramic knives. Mm -hmm. They're super sharp, that's the thing. Yeah. They look small, so they look yeah, like they're I love dangerous, that knife, but the ceramic knives are um, wonderful for slicing, especially garlic. And I have small hands, so I kind of like that. Yeah. That knife. But they are super sharp. Just because it's small doesn't take away. It's tiny but fierce. Tiny but fierce. Like me. So somebody's been chatty all day. Yeah. He's been saying, mum, 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 all day, all day long. All he says. But that's because we call one of our dogs mama. <laughs> That's what he likes to say. He likes to say that the baby isn't calling me. He's just calling our girl, Rigatoni, that we that we call mama most of the time. Because I'm not jealous at all. No, he's not. I'm gonna go check on that little baby though. He might be. Does he have his towel? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I thought that would buy us more time. All right, take some this garlic so it's ready to go. I'm very excited about this garlic butter shrimp sauce. Snack time for the bebe. All right, garlic is nice and diced. Shells are just about ready. So our shallots are just about, they're getting nicely brown, almost, trans, almost translucent. Um, I just lowered the heat. I'm going to let them simmer and bring them off the sides of the pan. And just let it simmer on low so that it cooks through. Check on the baby shrimp. Not quite cooked through, that's fine. All right. These tomatoes are going to be great. All right, let's see. So while we're waiting for this to finish up, we're just kind of relaxing right now. We're uh, doing well. I like how easy this meal is. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> okay. Shouts are looking good. We can add our garlic to this, I'm pretty sure now, at this point. I'm going to add a little bit of butter to that. So the shallots were cooking in a little bit of uh, olive oil, about a tablespoon or so. I'm going to put about a tablespoon of butter in here now and throw in the garlic. And then we're going to let those kind of cook up a little bit and we're going to add, then we're going to add our panko. And then we're going to coat up our shrimp and throw them in the oven. And when they're cooking, we'll get our cheese mixture ready. What do we say? Three tablespoons? Do we want to do that right now or cook the garlic first? Oh, so we'll do the one, yeah. cook the garlic, and then? Yeah, and then we'll add more. Garlic coming in. 
Coming in. Coming in hot. All right, cool. Med, med, med. Thank you. This smells delicious. Uh, <laughs> onions and garlic is maybe one of the best smells ever. Absolutely. A little butter makes it that much better. Sorry, Grace. <laughs> this smells great. Baby likes a snack too. Cool. All right, so this is doing its thing. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. Check on baby shrimp. Yeah, looking good. She's just gonna slice baby shrimp. Let's see what it cooks all the Okay. So tell us, tell them what we're gonna do with this, uh, with these breadcrumbs. Yes. So breadcrumbs are gonna be coming next. We're gonna be adding some panko breadcrumbs. Uh, into this mixture with some more butter. Uh, that's going to mix all together and become fun, become nice and toasted. Then we are going to toss our shrimp in with this mixture, mm -hmm. coat our shrimp with the panko garlic butter mix. We're going to then place them into our little both uh, pan to cook in um, and serve in and then throw them in the oven. And they're going to cook for about like 10 minutes or so in our uh, oven that's at 425. What are these? <laughs> yes, right, Grace? You hear him singing back there? He's actually just going, ma, 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 ma. Ma, ma. He's talking to me. If anybody so, um, knows the movie, A League of Their Own, it's like, I'm singing to Nelson. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to put a little olive oil on top of the shrimp. That's going to help to adhere the panko. A little sauce. I'm sorry, what did you put in there? A little olive oil. Olive oil, yeah. Just so it mm -hmm. adheres. Alright, this looks good. Yeah. Alright, we're going to add some butter, some more butter. So in this mixture here, we're going to have at least about... Give or take about uh, three tablespoons all together. So you're just adding together. two more. Two more. It's going to kind of become a little saucy. So this is what we were talking about with avoiding the salt because this butter has sea salt in it. So we don't want to make it too Good. There we go. If you have unsalted butter at home, though, you can certainly add salt to your shrimp or to your panko. Mm -hmm. All right, so this butter is breaking up here. He agrees. He agrees. So are we adding the panko directly to this or just onto the shrimp themselves? We can go either way. We're kind of making this on the fly. Okay. What do you think? I think we should throw the shrimp in the thing, mm -hmm. put the butter on top, and then add the panko, and then just kind of give it a quick toss. Sounds good. All right. So am I placing them mm -hmm. fancily? Yep. Yeah. So the butterfly allows me to lay these shrimp out very nicely. <laughs> Little boy agrees. And I get to lay them out into this container, into this pan. If you don't have a pretty pan like this, a Pyrex would work. Any anything that's uh oven safe. Oven safe. Baby dropped from this cracker, meatballs eating it up. 
Not surprising at all. Mm -hmm. Can you turn anything off on that? Sure. It's probably done. So baby shrimp is ready. Pull that and cool it. And dice it up. Cool. All right. So that, I'm just going to pour this butter mixture right on top. You can see me doing that here. And you're How you doing, Jane? I got it. I got it. I didn't use the sock. On his, in his standard. Perfect. Pull it down for him. Just gonna get some of this shallot and garlic out of here. Got some of this pan. I'm just gonna kind of I'm messing with the shrimp a little bit. Sorry. I know it looks so pretty, but I want to coat everything. Hey, where's your cracker? Finish it, baby. All right, so we've got our shrimp in here. And now I'm going to add some panko. We're using both of these, right? Yeah. So we're going to put a nice coating on Yeah, let me see. Excuse me. There it is. There we go. Yeah, this looks so pretty. We actually don't need you, though. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, there we go. There's more in here than I thought. And the panko is going to really soak up some of that butter. Mm -hmm. It's coated our shrimp. So that was like about a quarter cup in there, I guess. Yeah. More or less. Now we're going to throw this into the oven, right? The oven now, should goes. we give it a stir, you think? Or we'll give it a, like a light little stir. Just kind of make sure everything's some. coated. Yeah. Whenever he gets his first words, he's going to be like, give me some, give me some. There we go, going to drop. All right, so this is going to go into our oven now, and I'm going to set the timer for about 10 minutes. Ten minutes, 425. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, let's, let me just kind of straighten this up a little bit, and then we're going to get our uh, mixture ready for the cheese. Let me get you the cutting board. I think the shrimp you got on there. No. <laughs> Somebody's having fun. Don't want shrimp time, baby. So we just have a uh, whole milk ricotta cheese, um, whatever kind you get. Whatever brand. That's cool. This was 
off Amazon, the Whole Food Market. This is Calabro. That's always nice. From a family of cheesemakers. Mm. All right. So you use the whole container? Whole container. Whole container. And actually, the mixture with this. If there's um, some left, we'll you could, put yeah, it aside. We we'll it. save it for later. We'll save it for later on. Because we're going to be seasoning it up. So this is, uh, this is 16 ounces. It might be a little bit over, but I mean, I would need it just. I it even straight. All right, so the reason you're probably like, oh, it's we've got the cheese. Well, why are you uh, putting it into a bowl? We're actually going to season this. Because you want to make sure you season everything. We're going to season with a little extra virgin olive oil. Just a touch. Add a teaspoon. A little crushed red pepper. Pinch of that. Pinch of salt. Remember, I can salt this. This is not my shrimp. And a little granulated garlic. Then I'm just going to give it a quick stir. The ricotta cheese is very clean, very mild. So just giving it this little bit of seasoning is going to bring it up to the next level. And when you give it a nice stir and whip it up, it actually gets a nicer consistency than it had in the container itself. It's a little bit more pliable, so we're gonna whip that up together, mix the seasoning. I'm gonna throw. Ooh, that was good. okay. Oh, cause the uh, oven vents on top. Cheese tastes good. I'm gonna throw this bread in. Throw so the bread in. I'm gonna put the ragat in the fridge to stay cool. Baby shrimp is ready to go. Chop that up real quick back here. Uh, bear with us a second while we prepare his dish. So this is going to be like for the baby. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a like shrimp and rice. It's almost like an Indian style sort of like soup. Yeah. It's kind of cool. I know it's you want this coming. shrimp. It's coming. Oh, freshy fresh. It's coming. I don't know if he's a fan. I think he's just over being in the chair. There you go. All right, so we've got our bread toasting in there. Our shrimp is cooking. We have about four minutes left on that shrimp, and then we'll give it a check. And that bread too, we don't want it to get too crispy. starting to get a little bit pink. That's what we want. That shows that it's cooking. Um, we've got a couple more minutes on that. And then while that's doing that, 
we're going to get started on our honey mixture, too. What's the matter, baby? Wow, she's very demanding tonight. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get our honey ready. I can't hear you. Talking to me? No. All right, let's get our honey mixture ready. I'm going to put a little olive oil in a pan. About a tablespoon. A touch of salt and pepper. Tomorrow will you try a different shrimp? Maybe Daddy will just eat your rice and shrimp. Uh, I'm gonna do about a teaspoon of honey. This is uh, fresh raw honey, so that's why it's a little bit thicker. Some delicious. And then I'm just gonna drizzle a little water in here. And it's gonna allow the honey and oil to mix together a little bit better. Uh, oil and water not friends, but We'll drizzle in this as I mix it together. It's going to go a long way. So just a touch of water, and now I can add my crushed red. Since there's a good amount of honey in there, you can go a little heavier on the crushed red. If you don't want it too spicy, go a little bit lighter. Now he's happy. He just wants mom to pick him up. Always, always, always. All right, so I did about a teaspoon of crushed red. Put this on medium low heat. And we're just gonna lightly stir it together. Just nice and easy. Babs, I still don't know what you said. I think that's a voice to text. I'm not quite sure what's going on. Now he's happy. All right. So it looks like this timer is for our bread or for the shrimp? The shrimp. Shrimp. Okay. So you got the shrimp, see how that looks. The bread's probably ready as well. So the shrimp look nice and cooked. Actually, just gonna set these aside. What I might do is I might throw them in the broiler. And let them brown up on top. And I'm gonna pull my bread now. Is that gonna be nice and toasty? So nice and toasty, almost like a little bit of a crostini. I'm gonna find a home for these. Now for a moment. I'm gonna get a serving tray of those. And I can kind of start to prepare my toast. Alright. My toast. Start plating these. It's gonna go toast for got tomato and then my Oil honey on top, my honey oil on top, which is coming together very nicely. It's a little bit loose and liquidy. I'm just gonna let this simmer for a touch more. back up to broil. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm going to throw the shrimp back in. Just 
just for about a minute, just to get them nice and brown. My honey oil is nice and loose and come together. I'm gonna to actually pull that off the heat. I'm gonna start making up these crostinis. Just gonna have a nice scoop of ricotta cheese to each one. So these are super pretty, like we said. Um, they're very, very pretty and very, very tasty. Put my apron back on. Mm. All right, so yep, you're just gonna put like a dollop to cover each piece of toast there. Then we're gonna put some of those blistered tomatoes. We had a chance to let them cool down. Just a bit. Check on the shrimp. Oh, thank you. They look good. Switch hands here. They almost look like little cupcakes, these, <laughs> these pieces of toast. Ooh, perfect. perfect. So these are nice and browned now. So you can see they got some nice crisps on the outside. So those are all set. Can we shift this yeah. over? There we go. That sounds good too. I thought it was just. All right, ready. So now we can start to plate these up. Dong. These are, oh, okay. so we cooked these first also, so now they are cool, so I can actually handle them with my hand. So I'm going to add tomato to each. So I'm going to start with one. I didn't count them. Usually I count them. You know what? I didn't count them either. They to make sure I have them. enough. Because um, you want to pair them up. I think that we have guy. Sure. And you just want to kind of try to pair opposite colors. So a yellow with a red. Just to make them green. It will just look nicer that way. They're very festive looking too, so they're really nice for the holidays. But like I said, this is something that you can make on a normal day, like today. Like for us, it's not a holiday, but we're, we just like these. They're super tasty. You can make them if you're if you're having a pasta dish or fish dish, or it really doesn't matter. You can just have them as a little side or an appetizer to start your meal. But they're very pretty. Yeah, we have plenty. Perfect. So you just top these tomatoes. We're just going to drizzle that hot honey, that hot and spicy honey up over the top, and then it's good to go. That's it. This is what this meal is. We have our little shrimp um, appetizer, our baked garlic butter baked shrimp, and our ricotta tomato toast. And they look really good. And I'm going to pull them over to the side for you to see. And then we'll Throw that down just so that. Yeah. <laughs> These are the other ones. Yeah. Oh, okay. And they're just, they're super hot, so. Yeah. So you can see, I'm just going to pull it up to the camera again. So there's our, I'm just trying to find where the best, oh, there you go. So there's our shrimp. You can see it's nice and brown there. Um, the buttery goodness inside. So when you start, when you pick these up too and actually plate them, there's going to be like nice breaded butter goodness from the middle. Yeah. We can actually have, pretty you have fresh parsley, you could throw it on top. Yes, we don't have fresh parsley with the snowstorm. We had some parsley in our yard um, over the summer. summer. So it has a nice little color. A little bit of parsley. A little parsley on top of these. Mm -hmm. And that's that. I gotta oil these. Oh yes, you gotta put, oh that's right. 
forgot to do the oil. I love the look of like parsley on a white plate. I just think it mm -hmm. pops very nicely. I forgot that it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, so That's now... That's going to be hot, too, so be careful. So here, you want to take these? No, 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 I just didn't want you to touch it. So my oil, I even let it sit for a little bit, which is fine. You'll see that it kind of almost has changed color. You can smell the sweetness, but you can, you're can you going to get the spice from the chili flavors. Mm -hmm. So just taking a, a spoonful and just drizzling a little bit on each. I can't wait to eat these. It's going to be slightly messy, and that's totally okay. A touch on each. Just kind of bring it all together. You want you you want to get those chili flakes. You, you might think like, oh my gosh, that's a lot of chili flakes on each. But the honey's gonna cut right it's through. It's really it. gonna, yeah. And so is the and it's not a, cheese. It's not yeah, and it's not as sweet and spicy. It's just well balanced. Mm -hmm. And again, like if you like a lot of heat, go for it and oh, put a yeah. lot of crushed red in, or use the flat green chilies. And um, but this is just gonna give it a little bit of heat. It's not overly hot. Just the tomato here. Oh. All right, so that those are our dishes for tonight. These are little apps that you could certainly make um, if you're hosting guests or if you're just eating for two or even for one. <laughs> yeah. You have leftovers. This, the toast actually is really good cold, too. Um, it tastes really yes. great when it's heated up, but it is good cold because <laughs> we've made plenty and put them in the fridge and then just had them the next day, and they're these great. Gonna go yeah, we're going to eat all of these tonight. So we will post the recipes for these on our Instagram later on this evening or tomorrow, whenever I get to it. Oh, um, my. The, Sorry, snow, I just outside. the snow is sticking. It is falling down there. It is sticking. Um, we're going to go eat it's dinner. Like a quarter, half, a quarter of an inch already. Already, yeah. Um, but we're going to clean this all up. We're going to go eat our dinner. Wow. Um, Stick Sorry. around. I'm going to find uh, oh. another stream to raid. Thanks for joining us tonight. Our dinner is done. So hang tight as we find somebody else to raid. Let's see who's on. Okay. We're going to read Mrs. Ruby. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Before Seafood. we go. Lemon. A little bit of lemon on top of our shrimp. Thanks for that. I totally forgot. Um, all right. Just to get you there. Perfect. Perfect. Now, we're, now our dinner now is our done. Now our dinner is done. <laughs> <laughs> more of that. Mm. This, ric this ricotta cheese is so stinking good. Yeah, I could just eat that. Just with a little olive oil, salt, and pepper, and that garlic. It's so good. They're totally different for book. So good. And actually, that's what we use when we make um, manicottis, manicotti, or money goats, as Italian Americans call them. Um, money goats! All right, but I am going to read Mrs. Ruby. Um, so again, thanks for joining us. We're going to go eat. I hope that you get yeah. to make some of these appetizers yeah, for sorry. yourself said, or for your friends. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Bye, Get everybody. him out of here. Get him out of here. Ciao. <laughs> I can't believe how much it's sticking out there.